So, Jaronism claims that star trails are impossible on a globe Earth, and I want to put that to the test. So, I made up this rig using a bicycle rim, a camera, and a vice, so I can spin the bicycle rim and simulate the Earth's rotation. Now, you might say that a bicycle rim doesn't look like a globe. Well, it's very similar, in fact, and here's a globe over the top of the bicycle rim, and as you can see, it's a circular shape. It's still going to rotate the camera in the same kind of manner, just as if you were standing on Earth. So what does it look like? Well, here it is. The laser's shining on the ceiling. I spin the bicycle wheel and you see a circular star trail, not unlike what you would see if you look towards the northern celestial pole or the southern celestial pole for that matter. There are just a whole lot more stars and they aren't just red, obviously. But in this particular case, if you want to get uh, technical, uh, the rotation is anti-clockwise, which is representative of what happens in the northern sky if you're looking towards Polaris, or if you have uh, some sort of a time-lapse camera looking towards Polaris or the north celestial pole. Of course, the stars aren't red, and there's many more of them, of course. Next, we're going to determine what went wrong with Geronism's little experiment. All right, so we're looking at my house here. You'll see I tied a string to the ceiling in a spot. We're going to call that Polaris. I made sure that the string was taut and pulled directly down to the globe, which we'll see here in a second. And again, this is not uh, a great scientific test. This is just primitive but it was uh, enough to show me what uh, I think is enough to do this video. Okay, so this is generally where I believe Geronism's little experiment goes wrong. There are two problems with the experiment uh, that he's doing here. One is that string that we do not know is 100% lined up. Sure, it looks lined up from this angle, but if you were to go around 90 degrees either to the left or right and look at it, I believe there could be a bit of an angle there. Not sure, but it's quite possible. So you'll see that the string is actually straight down to the south pole, um, and it's pulled tight enough that there's no slack, slack there. So I felt that this was a pretty good representation. Yes, the North Star is so much for, further. And uh, by the way, that's Mr. Puppy there. And if you don't like his name, well, I don't know, talk to him. He uh, picked it. He wanted Mr. Puppy. So he's uh, making reference to his dog. But we're coming up to the other important part is the laser that he's going to have attached to the globe. Now, if that string is slightly off and then he attaches the laser to the globe and it's pointing at wherever the end of the string is, which is slightly off, that means the laser's actually slightly off. Now, if you were to rotate that globe and that laser was accurately aligned with the axis of the globe, it should only turn about an 8-inch circle or whatever the diameter of the globe is. But that doesn't happen. It turns a lot further away. A lot of options on the table, even with Mr. Puppy. So, this is the uh, little testing apparatus I have. I then attached a laser pointer. It's just one of the ones that's a dollar you can buy and uh, pointed it up till it was pointed at that star. Okay, so what this is the equivalent of now is a camera that is fixed on Polaris and it's about to take uh, time-lapse footage because as the Earth spins, that laser pointer should stay stuck on Polaris. I start to move it. As we look up, we are already off Polaris. Now, Somebody might say, well, it's because Polaris is much, much further, but that would make it off even more. Now, he proceeds to continue on with the experiment, and I've noticed a little issue. If you look at the angle at which the string comes in, just about there, you'll notice that it seems to be veering off to the left and not actually running with the axis 
of the globe. It's a different angle to what he showed it to be apparently lined up to, and if we were to stand on the side of the globe that his hand is on, we would notice that that string is actually veering off to the left, and that is accounting for what is actually going on with the laser shining on the ceiling. Because if that laser was 100% lined up with uh, the axis of that globe, it would literally only turn a circle, the circumference of the globe, and not veer off like it has. It's obviously not lined up correctly. I don't know whether he's deliberately setting out to deceive. It kind of appears that way because it's obvious to me that it's not lined up. But either way, it's a very poorly executed experiment and very poorly thought out. So I would have to say that uh, Geronism's experiment on this count is an epic fail. Because if you replicate what happens in real life, as in you actually put the camera on the earth, on the globe, or on the wheel in this case, and have a fixed point of reference on a ceiling, and then rotate the globe or wheel in representation of the earth rotating, you get an accurate result which is exactly the same as what we see in real life. So as you can see, Geronism's got it wrong again, and he's deceiving you. Anyway, leave your comments and questions in the comments section. Have a great day. Bye.